What's up guys? So uh, really excited to be back making videos. I wanna start off by apologizing that it's been a couple weeks, um, maybe even three weeks since I uploaded my last uh, video, but I'm back making videos. Um, I had a lot of projects going on with a lot of hair companies uh, creating videos for them. So um, it took me away from doing this, which is what I really love doing in the first place. So I'm really excited to share with you guys a haircut today. Uh, today we're going to focus on doing a shag haircut uh, with a razor. So I think you guys are gonna really like this haircut. It's a very simple way of doing a shag. Um, you could make this as extreme or as uh, subtle as you wanted to based on um, some things I'm gonna talk about in the video, but I'm really excited to share with you guys this video. I'm also going to partner this up uh, in an upcoming video with a hair color technique for this. So uh, depending on when you're watching this video, check back the other videos, you'll be able to see a hair color technique to go with this haircut. So I uh, hope you guys are as excited as I am. I'm so happy to be back making videos for you guys. Um, let me know in the comments below um, if you're excited as well. Let's get started with this video. Here we go. All right guys, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put in the hair the Tea Tree Lavender Mint Taming Cream. It's a hydrating and controlling cream. We're gonna use it basically uh, like a cutting lotion. What a cutting lotion does is I can work it into the hair. It helps keep my sections nice and clean, holds the hair a little bit tighter together. Uh, so I'm gonna put that in at first and then I'm gonna brush it through the hair and then I'm gonna start off my sectioning. My sectioning is gonna be straight down the center. And then what I wanna do is I wanna find the fringe area. So I place the comb on on the forehead to really see where that forehead starts to bend away. And then what I'm gonna do is draw a triangle from that point down to just the edge of the eyebrow and then comb it forward. And that's how I'm gonna create my first triangle section in the front uh, fringe area. The reason I wanna find that first is because I wanna base the rest of my sectioning off of that point. So I'll comb that up in the air, nice and tight, twist it up and out of the way, and then I'll move on to the rest of the sectioning. All right guys, so once I get that clipped away, um, one thing that I've been really focused on is that hairline and how it interacts with the rest of the haircut and the density that I'm working with in each section. So um, I try to get that triangle to kind of line up with the hairline so I know that I'm working with the same density there. And then I'm going to take from mid crown uh, around to the corner of that triangle and that's going to be my next section that I'm going to clip away. So I want to separate the top and the bottom, uh, but knowing that that middle section or underneath of this top section is going to be the same density all the way through to behind the ear. So I clip that away, I do the same thing on the opposite side, go all the way over to the corner of the triangle, and then I clip that away. You could make this top section all one if you wanted to, I just feel like it stays a lot cleaner if you break it up into two sections. So now I go straight down center back, comb that over, and then I go from the occipital bone over to behind the ear, comb that down, and then I clip the mid part of the section or the middle part away nice and tight. Um, and it's ready for me to continue on later in the cut. So I comb it over, uh, really work the fine teeth of the comb in, and then I slide that clip up underneath. I really want you guys to notice how clean that sectioning is uh, and how I really plan out these haircuts because um, when you're in the salon, I know that you're rushed for time, but the most important thing that you can do is focus on the sectioning. Uh, and I'm gonna get into that in a little bit, but I wanna get you guys started off here. So in the back, what I'm doing is I'm taking a half inch section and you can see in the overhead there, and then I just glide that razor over top. My tool choice here is the Donald Scott Swivel Twist Razor, which is available on freesaloneducation.com if you're looking for a new razor tool. It's like $39, I believe. Um, you can go on there and pick it up. If you have a razor already that you love, you can do this same technique. It's just use a fresh blade, pull the section straight out from the head, straight out from where it lives. We're creating rounded layers. And then you glide from that top point where you want uh, the layers to start and then you glide down to the bottom. What I like to do is just kind of give up on the razor a little bit once I get towards the bottom of the hair because you can always adjust the outer perimeter. You want to get those interior layers correct and then you can always cut your length to your liking or to your guest liking at the very end. So notice um, I was combing over top of the section on the left hand side. Now I'm combing uh, towards the center. So I'm always combing the hair in the same direction. And then I glide that razor over top. 
Now, a lot of people um, talk about, you know, are you going to create a hole? Are things like that going to happen? Especially when you're working with rounded layers. We're creating a rounded haircut, so it's going to flow with the hairline, so I don't have to worry about cutting a hole. If I was cutting a bob, then I might do different things to help kind of counteract um, that hairline. So you can see right here, I'm going to section from the hairline uh, and separate the front and the back. That's something I've been doing a lot lately. So we did it in the front in that triangle section. We did it in the back here. So now I'm aware of where that hole would happen in the haircut. So just sectioning makes you smarter, right? So if you go in and you section the right way, then you don't have to worry during the haircut that you're, um, you're going to affect the density in the hairline at all because you've sectioned it the right way. So notice I go through, still cutting those round sections, using that bottom uh, that I cut before as my guideline, and I just glide that razor over. It's a brand new blade. It slides right through the hair. So in my classes, um, one thing that I notice when I do these hands-on things is that people rush the sectioning, and, they, and then they really focus on the cutting, right? So... The problem with that is when you're not focused on the sectioning, then you're not cutting the right stuff. You're not cutting it the way that you should. So I think you should put 90% of your energy into the sectioning and the cutting is just simple after that. You already know, you already have your plan. So think about that when you go to cut hair the next time. Put all of your energy basically into that plan and then go in and execute it with the cut. So still pulling the hair straight out from the head, creating those rounded layers all the way to the hairline. You can see how fun those layers are. It's obviously very long in the back, but like I said, I left that length and I'm going to go in and cut that length off um, at the end. So uh, don't worry about that. So now I'm going to work because I'm working with less density now. So all of that section right there back to the hairline behind the ear is less density. So I'm not going to pull it straight out from the head and cut it the same, but I do want to create that kind of short to long in the back. So what I do with this is I overdirect everything forward, which pushes more weight into the area where there's less density. So think about that. Um, also, here's a little trick here. Um, I measure the hair. I hold it out in front of me, and I cut that little piece. Now I've got my, um, my measured section, and then I go through and I execute the rest of the cut. So think about those things. Um, you know, If we're building something, we measure and we cut a line for a guide. So we do the same thing when we're building a haircut. We measure that line, and then we go through and execute. A lot of people struggle with balancing both sides, um, so just use that kind of tool as a measure. So now I'm going to go through, I'm going to connect the top. Now I'm working uh, with a continuous density across the top, so I'm just going to connect those sections, and I'm going to roll through uh, with a traveling guide all the way through to the back. So creating nice short layers, um, a lot of texture in this cut, and a lot of movement, uh, really cool shag effect. So notice that my section isn't too wide. So a lot of people will grab a ton of hair, pull it together, but the more hair you clump together, the more over direction that's happening, and then you start to lose your guideline, and you start to over direct hair where you didn't want it to go, and you create length where you didn't want it. So make sure probably about a half an inch section, maybe uh, three quarters of an inch at the most, um, if you're condensing it a little bit, uh, but just don't take too much hair. So now same thing, create a little guideline, and then I go through, I use that piece as a guide, and then I connect uh, the other side. So we're gonna do the same thing on this side, working through traveling guide all the way to the back of the head. All right, so you're seeing that texture come into life. Now we're gonna cut the fringe, and the thing I love about the Donald Scott Twist Razor is that it's so simple to cut a nice shattered fringe with it. So I 100% cut side, I hold the hair out, 
a low elevation and I just do a nice about an inch back and forth movement and it cuts a nice shattered fringe right in the front. So now you can see all that texture coming out and I go through and now I'm going to cut those pieces that I left out at the bottom uh, so that I knew I had the density that I wanted. I go through and I just grab those pieces and I cut them exactly the length that I want them and then that helps finalize the haircut. So now I'm going to go in with the Tea Tree Lavender Mint Curl Refresh. Um, this is such a light foam which I really love um, and I put that throughout the hair really activate some of that curl in there and then we're going to finish it off with the uh, Paul Mitchell Express Ion Turbo Light Plus Blow Dryer and uh, we're going to diffuse the hair working it all the way around till the hair is 100% dry before we start putting our hands in it uh, we don't want to create any frizz and then I just style it up with my fingers a little bit. You can see this end result. You can see all the texture. The shape of the haircut is awesome. Um, you could definitely leave these layers longer if you wanted to, if your guests didn't want this short of layers. But I hope you guys like the cut. Hope you can use it in the salon. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments. Thanks for watching. All right, guys, and like always, if you like the video, then make sure you hit the like button, share this video with all of your hairdresser friends, and also subscribe to this channel um, because even though sometimes we take a break, I'm always making more and more videos for you guys. Thank you guys so much for hanging in with me, the support uh, over the years of making these videos. Thanks for watching.